You're listening to the Cricket Podcast. Hello everyone and welcome to the Cricket Podcast where it's Marcus Steiner's Terrible Over Appreciation Day. <laughs> Colcart and Knight Riders, they came so close to putting the pressure on and then fell apart. They needed just five from three balls. Steiner's, you know, as mentioned, the hero, but a lot more to talk about in that game. We're also talking about yesterday, which was pretty good. Well, Tim David was pretty good. The game was completely meaningless, but... Um, you know, that's cricket. And Monday, where Delhi Capitals effectively slayed the Punjab Kings. I'm Jack Hope. I'm joined by Max Rowe Brown. We're two people in two different room, rooms, rooms, rooms of the same rooms. house. How you doing, Max? Yes, good. Uh, that was a, that was a hell of a game. So um, yeah, pretty pumped after uh, after watching that <laughs> final over. That was nuts. <laughs> Yeah, um, it yeah, it was incredible, wasn't it? I mean, it was two hundred and ten plays, uh, two hundred and eight bunch of wickets mm. in one innings, no wickets in the other innings. King Legend Ball eating the third highest score in the history of the IPL. I think the third highest partnership, the highest opening partnership, yeah. um, more sixes, highest, part- highest partnership that's not between Coley and Davilias. Yeah, um, it it had. It had a hell of a lot. It had a lot. It had big characters too. Steiner, Stein Dog, hero. Um, saying goodbye to our co-commentator, the Bear from Gorilla Cricket, uh, as we just wrapped up our show. Do we want to start with that game, or do you want to say some messages? Uh, let's let's do some quick messages uh, for the listeners. So, as always, please like this video on YouTube. Help us uh, break the algorithm, and subscribe to uh, to the channel to keep up with everything. Uh, head over to Twitter and Instagram at the Cricket Pod to get in touch with us over there and, and follow all of our musings as uh, as the games go on and and Ross pot, uh, taking pot shots at, at various cricketers. And um, if you want to uh, support the shows, patreon.com forward slash the Cricket Pod. And finally, our sponsor, uh, as always, is Serious Cricket, where you can get ten percent off cricket equipment if you use the code TCP twenty two. So uh, sun's out, the weather's beautiful in the UK. Perfect for cricket. So go out and get yourself a, a Shimon Hetmeyer hat. I got some new shoes the other day. I got 27 off 10 balls. I don't know if I mentioned that on the show. Maybe I did. All from the shoes. Yeah, all from the shoes. Well, it gave me a solid base to hit from. Mm. That, was the, that was the important thing. If you think about it, power is built from the ground up. I had some nice day painter shoes on. And we're also going to talk, well, I think we'll do a little bit on the England squad because, you know, why not? Um, but we'll do that right at the end of the show. Let's yeah. talk about. Let's talk about. Let's talk about uh, the game we just watched. Um, it's difficult to know when we saw we saw two quite brilliant things. We saw a brilliant finish and we saw a brilliant innings from Quinton de Kock. Which of the two brilliants do you want to talk about first? Uh, why, why, don't we, why don't we go with uh, de Kock because that's where the game started, really, isn't it? Okay. That gave us the base for the for the what, brilliance. What did you think of de Kock? <laughs> uh, it was pretty stunning, wasn't it? As uh, as innings go, I mean, it was clearly the uh, the innings of the of the tournament with the bat so far. The um, 140 off 70 balls, 200 strike rate, and just the acceleration at the end was was uh, quite stunning. Um, so the the first 50 came off 36 deliveries, uh, which was you know okay. Uh, it looked like at the time it was a fairly tricky thing to bat on, particularly when the spinners were on. It was. Uh, you know, poking the ball around after a you know a reasonable power play, and then um, uh, yeah, well, fifty off thirty six to one hundred and forty off seventy. So the next ninety came off thirty four balls, which is uh, uh, quite quite something. And the 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 acceleration at the end to take on the paces was stunning. There was some some ridiculous stroke play going on, and um, kind of uh, yeah over. Over, overshadowed the uh, the Kale Rahul slight ball eating affair, I suppose you could say. But if you were being generous, you might also say he was just getting uh, Quinton de Kock on strike to do his madness. As as a, which uh, side of the lens you're looking down, doesn't uh, it? As I said live, I know which way he's going to frame that innings. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it, it was, um, yeah, I mean, the, I, the, the, the incredible thing about the, I mean, obviously a century in a T20 match is, you know, Brilliant. It's a baseline. It's yeah. fucking good. It's, it's, it's brilliant. 
Uh, I think he got to a uh, century. I think it was 62 balls. I think he he went from 99 to 103. 62 balls. Next eight balls, he hit for 37 <laughs> runs. <laughs> it was absolute carnage. Absolute carnage. Tim Southey, you know, I still don't think we'll, we'll properly have recovered from that over than the final over. I mean, Andre Russell, actually didn't, it wasn't even that bad an over, but everything he did just went for, for four. It was like, that outside edge has gone. Slice over point, that's going to go for four. Time one through midwick, that's going to go for four. Uh, you, you rarely see, I mean, he's hit 20 balls for, for four or six in that innings. Um, so one ball and over for that entire innings, Quinton de Kock was effectively hitting a boundary. That's... Uh, that's uh, that's a that's a that's a, that's a nice way of looking at it. That's, I mean, what, what's that? Uh, 20, 20, 20 out of seventy balls hit for for four or six. Uh, what's your what's your maths like, Max? Hmm? What, what's your math? Twenty eight percent of hit the ball. Th- nearly thirty percent of the balls he hit um, yeah. in that, or we facing that game went, went for four or six. Now, if you think across an entire innings, we would say good for how many boundaries you hit. Twenty percent. Like, if everybody in your team is going hell for leather and you're getting, like, 20, pushing up to 22%, you're, you're, you're doing well. By himself, he's just more than half the balls, tw- sustained 28% or, or has delivered that. That's, that is, um, yeah, it's, it's one of, seriously speaking here, one of the best T20 innings probably ever. Ever? Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think you could probably say ever. Like, there's... This KKR attack, it's not not box office, but Umesh Yadav, Tim Southey, Sonal Narayan, Jack Cravati, Andre Russell, they bowled 29 of the, uh, 29, 19 of the 20 overs, and all of them are uh, solid IPL bowlers. They've all had good moments. They've all, they all probably deserve a place um, at the table in the tournament, and, and he has, he has blitzed them. a lot of them. Should we well, talk maybe about Sinon Narayan did all right, but Narayan again was 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 phenomenal. He's you know having a, a freak year, isn't he? That stays quite freakish. Um, do we do we want to talk about the the debutant and his role in the Quinton de Kock? Yeah, show? I, I suppose we should, shouldn't we? Because uh, it could all have been so very different when uh, Lucknow were on thirteen off uh, a couple of overs. And um, let's let's be honest, it wasn't it wasn't the hardest catch in the world, was it? Uh, he was uh, he was there. He was under it. Uh, he dived forward probably because he slightly misjudged it. It was in his hands, and uh, and then sort of popped out off the heel. It was um, uh, it's not a nice way uh, to to announce yourself to, to the team two two overs in. Yeah, it was uh, a bit of a horror didn't get day. Didn't better either. But... It was a bit of a horror day. We hit one ball for four, didn't he? So his entire contribution yeah. today was uh, minus one hundred and thirty-seven, uh, plus four, minus one hundred and thirty-three runs. Uh, that's definitely yeah. not how this works, but uh, uh, roughly. And uh, I think we should feel like that. probably also. I think the best thing that can be said about his day today was that he didn't get a diamond duck because he almost was responsible for a horrendous run out in the first over. Yeah! Well, between him and, and Ben Key. Oh, yeah, he absolutely should have. He should have. Um, G- 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 Quinton de Kock, we should, we've, we've got a super chat, but we'll hold that because it's about, it's about the, the end and um, we'll get there. But, uh, Jitter, thank you very much. Uh, and if you're in the chat, you know, one, give us a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Uh, and two, give, give, give Jitter a little bit of love for supporting the Cricket Podcast. Um... Max, uh, set against King Legend, or, mm. or or maybe to look at this a different way, um, what's King? What is King Legend doing at the other end while while Quinton de Kock's scoring one hundred and forty or seventy? <laughs> uh, not a lot, I think is uh, is what we can say. So he, they both. I mean, they both started a little slowly. In fairness, you know, it wasn't uh, neither of them had the fastest start in the world. But that, um, yeah, that that middle period, they they signed, they kind of dovetailed, didn't they? Where Quinton de Kock kicked on, and Cal Rahul just didn't didn't go anywhere. He was just content to knock singles around. It was, um, and again, it was like a, it was a lack of intent that we saw. It wasn't this sort of. He wasn't trying to score boundaries at this point. It was when well, with the last like six, seven overs of the innings, he was, he was just tapping around, and uh, Quinton de Kock found that extra gear. 
Kel Rahul, for some reason, didn't bother. And um, De Kock kind of saved him. I yeah. I, otherwise, we could be looking at a match losing innings again. Well, it, I mean, it, it really, really was pretty close to that, wasn't it? Mm. It's only because at the other end, you have one of the best all-time match winning innings that, that you can sort of do whatever. At, at, at the opposite end there, and, and, and effectively get away with it. Um, I, I I thought it was a really interesting innings for another reason as well. Thematically speaking, we we've said this a few times that there does seem to be a trend this year um, that suggests that you can go into matches with a with a light like a a less deep batting order maybe, but a higher quality number of of good quality batters. Um, yeah, well, you only need two, apparently. Well, yeah, I mean, I, it's, it's 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 a little bit it's a little bit obvious to say that 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 today. But this is, I mean, this are a team. They like now Super Giants. They are a team that are effectively um, are are built round having uh, a pretty phenomenal um, opening partnership. And then and then if you look sort of lower down their order, uh, Evan Lewis has had his moments. Deepak Huda. Had a reasonable season. Manan Vora in and out of the team. I mean, nobody would say he's, uh, you know, in the conversation for one of the best top, uh, best number fives in the tournament. Stoinis, you know, probably ab- above average as a, an overseas lower order hitter. And Holder, you might say, is a decent number eight. But that's not, it's not a particularly strong batting order. Uh, but they are where they are uh, because the, the top two have churned out yeah, well, I, second I don't know what third it is. And second and yeah, third have you and have you, race, have you got they? the number of runs up there? Yeah, yeah, they've they've got uh, one thousand three, one one thousand and thirty nine runs between them. That's pretty good, isn't it? Three hundred six fifties, like. Um, what's what's uh, so fourteen matches? I'm just, I'm just going to do a quick bit of math. If you say one sixty five is about the average score in the IPL, or it was, um, it was till yeah. recently two thousand three hundred ten runs. Your top two have scored. More well, almost half the runs. Yeah. Well, that Lucknow you need. scored two thousand three hundred fifty-five, so you're not far off. Yeah, and, uh, and yeah, basically half the runs have come from those two, which is uh, it's incredible. So, so it's a really impressive feat from from the pair of them, but I I, I think maybe shows that, that that there's a new or or there is a, a new viable strategy in town. Um, certainly in the old IPL, the 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 way to win was to have a classic eight-six lineup: eight eight guys who can bat, six guys who can bowl. Now I think it's it's possibly a little bit more viable for for teams to have uh, a, a, something closer to like a a six five or a seven five where you've got six people who can bat or seven people who can bat and and only five people who can bowl. Um, mm. In fact, if we look at the KK innings and we and we'll get onto that because it, it was incredible. Um, Nineteen of the overs are uh, well, no, I'm sorry, you, you know, Stoinis is is kind of only bowling because. Actually, I don't know. Maybe that's not fair. Maybe, maybe, maybe they do have six bowlers here. Um, just thinking about it, because I don't know if you'd say Krishnan. Well, he was eight it. the other day, didn't he? Oh, uh, but, but I, I think it is. I, I like, I like, I like to see a little bit of tactical mm. variation. Well, Ra- Rajasthan Royals only use uh, five bowlers every time, don't they? And and they also don't have any. Uh, <laughs> they also bat down to about six or seven. I mean, they're they're the they're a perfect example of what you're. Uh, what you're saying, I think it's a uh, it's a paucity of all rounders, isn't it? That's that's caused this. It's uh, it's the hottest commodity, and um, when there's only ten teams around to take them up, uh, it naturally becomes harder to to get them in your team. So I think that's probably what uh, we've seen, and that's that's why that's occurring. But it does seem to be certainly seems to be a trend that we're seeing, and it's making for some interesting cricket. Actually, I think it's making for some some crazy games. Um, so in summary, Quinton de Kock, extremely good. Um, King Legend Rahul, strange. Uh, tactics, you know, fascinating. Uh, and it all leads to, to, to a situation where, as, as Jitta says, Rinku Singh is the new Tawatia in brackets almost. Um, <laughs> curtains for Sunrise of Hyderabad and, and Punjab Kings. What ifs galore for both incredibly timed innings from Liam. Uh, timid, I think that's Timid, says. timid, yeah. Uh, from Delhi Capitals, he'll never actually be a franchise player. We all want him to be sad. Well, we'll get onto Punjab in, in, in a little bit, but let's let's deal with the first part of that um, because the innings it starts off as a as a bomb site 
the Kolkata Knight Riders. Like, they lose two wickets. Yeah, sure, one of them's the guy who's just having a day out. I guess he won a lottery ticket or um, perhaps <laughs> made a, a, a charitable donation to... Oh, um, yeah, turned, to, turned, turned the wrong way down the corridor and accidentally or maybe, in the change room. Maybe Baz McCullum, because he knows he's going to England, was like, well, I need to get used to the, the possibility that my openers are out for no runs and are terrible. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ease myself into the England test role by putting this guy in uh, as the opener. So that I, uh, I'm, in, I'm in the right headspace uh, for when I take over England. Uh, here he goes. Um, Venky Iyer, pretty miserable season. You know, it continues zero. A phenomenal catch from Quinton de Kock behind, behind the wicket. Um, as if his day couldn't get any better. <laughs> uh, and then there's a little bit, of, uh, then they fight back. The, the, the cold cut Knight Riders, they are on the canvas. They are effectively out of the game. And uh, Nitish Rana comes in and, and plays a scintillating innings. It ends maybe slightly prematurely. But uh, it, by the time he is out, it's like, hold on a minute. You know, they've got, they've got a 30% stake in this match. Shreya Sire, uh, I, I, I think... Possibly in reaction to some of the, the, the good innings we've seen from players like Tripathi around and, and others around the league, Sanju Sampson around the league, fighting for his India place. He hits 50 and 29 balls, continues the momentum. Sam Billings comes in, flattered to deceive a little bit, 36 off 24. He's sort of done his job. And, and we get down to the point that, that well, we, we, you know, when Andre Russell is introduced to, to the game in the, what am I looking at here? The 13... 13th over, the 14th yeah. over of the match. You think that KKR are probably the favourites at this point, don't you? We, we, were, we were all like, here comes, here comes Dre Russ. It's, uh, it's perfectly set up for him to, to go and finish it off. And, uh, and then, um, yeah, a tortured 5 of 11 balls was not exactly the, uh, the show that we were hoping for or expecting. And then you're back to thinking, oh, maybe this is a little bit too much for them to do. Um, I mean, LSG did it. The position they were in, they they had to score, uh, what seventy seven off 30, 30 balls or something like that, which was which looked um, obtainable perhaps with Andre Russell, and we thought maybe not so obtainable without him. But uh, yeah, what we didn't uh, what we didn't account for was uh, <laughs> as just as said, Rinku Singh, the new Tawatia, who just tucked in, didn't he? To to, to it was an over of um, Jason Holder, and. Uh, was it another another over of Avesh Khan after he'd made a, a good comeback? Yeah, uh, just <laughs> just peppered the boundary, ball after ball, and let me know it got it down to what three three a ball for a while. We were like, well, look, it's tough, but they can do it, and they just kept up with that rate of three a ball for ages, and that and and then you know that takes you down to that that last over from Marcus Stoinis where twenty one required. Six balls. It was over. <laughs> uh, Marcus Stoinis, <laughs> a hilarious interview after the game, wasn't it? Where he was, he yeah. was. I, I can't remember. The question was like, "What were you feeling when you were throwing the ball in the nineteenth over?" And his response was that I should have bowled more in the middle. <laughs> 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 and, uh, well, fair play to him for that. Right? Um, he comes out, and uh, we we were saying, I think he's been, I think he has been hit around bowling the bowling at the death um, back in his Delhi days. Uh, mm. And one of our co-commentators says it had happened to him in, in, a, in an international as well. Yeah. And I mean, we should give him credit for his first over in the middle, to be fair. Oh, he yeah, yeah. Wicket of, um, well, he got the wicket, wicket of Shreyas Iyer, who'd also batted really well alongside Nitish Rana. Um, and didn't he, well, how many runs did he go for on the final over? They needed uh, 23 and they got 20. So he went for three runs in that over. So, uh, yeah, he, he'd done a really good job in the middle. Um uh, which I guess gave him that extra leeway at the end after his display of the first four balls. Sure. So his first ball to Rinku Singh uh, hit for four. Really nice shot. Second ball, Rinku Singh. Uh, it's that was a pretty average delivery, actually a half tracker. Yeah. Uh, when you're bowling seventy miles an hour, that's not what you want to be doing. Third ball goes for six, and then it and then it goes. I mean, like the 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 the, the safety blanket has evaporated. It's five off three balls. Um, Rinku Singh hits a two and you think he's going to do it you think this is going to be Rinku Singh the new Tawatia he seems like a really likeable guy he's a live wire in the field he's taking catches and cutting off boundaries keeping people to one when they've got no business having one they should be getting two um, you, you think you're sort of seeing the emergence of another one of these well I think we did see the emergence of another one of these Indian talents 
kind of a wide half volley and he pokes it up in the air and running it off the boundary. This is a, such a phenomenal catch because if he doesn't catch it, it's it's probably going to be a runs. three. Yeah. Well, probably they, they needed three to win at this point. They're probably going to get three because it will deflect away somewhere. By the time it's been picked up, you know, they, they, they're they going to bolt it. Worst case or best case scenario, you keep them to a situation where they need one off one ball and that's, you know, you basically need a wicket to take it to a super over in that situation. Evan Lewis, like this sliding one-handed catch, it was like the most louche take that you could you could possibly imagine. Like um, it like a it was like a football celebration with a catch involved. <laughs> um, it's just the the one-handed nature of it. Like it was just pu- yeah, pounding in off the boundary, and then in one fluid motion, like you say, just sort of slides, dies forward, and just sticks out a mitt, like all in one motion, just so nonchalant, just to pluck it out the air. And um, I mean, the three of us who were on commentary at the time all immediately just uh, made the same noise of like, oh, because it was that that kind of moment. It was a it was an, a stunning piece of field. And um, it was that was as much the match winner as the, the wicket off the last ball. Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, and then we get to the last ball. Still three required of two. Now, if you if you've if you've done your T20 homework, um, the last last the average number of runs scored off the last ball of the match is about two. Um, it's so so. In, in other words, the super over was was very on. Now, it, what we, it's not the 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 modal average. It's not necessarily that twos are the most common thing to mm. happen on the last ball of the match. You obviously you get fours, you get dots, you get wickets, you get sixes, you get singles, all of these. But it it works out when you when you look at the the mean average as a, as about two runs, which meant the super over was well on. Um, it was, and it was a great Yorker. It has to be said. Uh, Umesh Yadav is, is not God he's with not the bad. bat. But if you served up a half volley there, I think there's a pretty decent chance he smacks it for it six. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he, got it, he got it absolutely spot on. Uh, he did the full celebration, the Imran to here, going around the outfield. And you have to. Like, Stoinis, <laughs> Stoinis is not? one of the good guys in, in cricket, isn't he? He's, um, yeah. he's he, a likeable lad. He's got a he plays with a smile on his face. What I really liked about that over was the the variation in facial expressions that he went through um, without actually changing a facial expression at any point. Just uh, they say the window is the eye to the soul, right? And when he charged in for that first delivery, I saw terror in his eyes. And when I, when he came in for the third one after disappearing with two boundaries, I saw despair. And then when I, when he came in for the last ball with, uh, with three needed off it, I saw, I saw fire in his belly. I saw a man that was fired up and ready to win this game after nearly losing it. And um, and maybe I'm ascribing the uh, end result to uh, what I saw uh, uh, in my memory, but I, that's, that was the feeling I got from him, and it, it was a it was a really uh, a really entertaining finish. And um, and yeah, that interview at the end was nice. I, uh, <laughs> I I enjoyed I enjoyed his response. Although it's always easier to do that when you've just won rather than blown the game, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it is. But I, <laughs> I look if someone's going to do it, I. I, I, I I, th- I think Stoinis has got when you when you hear him talk about cricket, he's got one of the 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 best mentalities I think mm. for, for the sport, and um, I I, I kind of mean that in in two ways. One, like he's so prepared to put himself in that difficult position. Now, Marcus Stoinis, skills wise, he should be nowhere near the twentieth over of the match. It's only because he's happy to say to King Legend, "Did you remember, like in the eleventh over, they had a big conflab, and it was like Stoinis and Holder and Huda mm. and King Legend." And what happened was that the King Legend brought forward two of his death bowlers, Mosin Khan, who, by the way, we're not really going to talk about loads on this show. I don't think amazing spell from him. Like that's definitely match winning or, or yeah. you know, huge value added by him. Um. But he, I, I, Stoinis was part of that conversation, and I think effectively what they were saying was we need to bowl one or both of of um, Holder and Mosin slightly earlier than than we would ideally like because Shreyas Iyer is going to take this game away from us. He's he's batting too well, and and, and Billings is is batting a bit too well. So we need to use a, a, a top bowler, one of our death bowlers, somebody who can disturb their rhythm right now, and then later on. 
the trade-off is that you know either Christian Napa Gautam is is going to be bowling really late in the innings, or Sto- <laughs> <No>. Stoyan, <laughs> or Stoyan is going to take, have to take an over. And they knew that Avesh Khan was going around the park as well, so they had to sort of fit that in somewhere. So Stoyan is at some point will have said, "I'm happy to do that." Um, and, and he'd have known for mm. quite a long time he'll have been out there thinking that it's coming to him. I am going to get the ball in a situation which is going to to there's going to be pressure. I might have the advantage with runs on the board. Uh, the other bowlers might be able to get me that, but I'm going to have to bowl to Sun on the Ryan, the guy with the second highest strike rate in the history of the IPL. I'm going to have to bowl to the new Tawatia. He probably wasn't thinking, <laughs> he probably wasn't thinking that, to be fair. <laughs> now he might be. Um, and he, but he was happy to do that. And I, I, think, I think that's a great mentality. But then on the other hand, like he walks off the pitch and he's making a joke about it. And um, he, he, he's sort of funny and he understands mm. that it is just sport it, it is it does not you know the the emotion we get caught up in it, it is not the same as serious things i think there's a lot to be said for that so it's an, look story this uh Sudeep raj has sent us a super chat how big is scoreboard pressure and i think this will take us on to the next match because we had two on two 200 chases this is a good segue uh how big is scoreboard pressure why is it so much harder to chase 200 than it is to set the, that score first 11 and over for the last eight overs Seems impossible when chasing, but often that happens often. Batting first, and I think it is an interesting one. That isn't it? Like you, you, and you see scores of one sixty chased down pretty regularly now. Like one sixty yeah. is not what it used to be. Um, but the kind of curve, the curve in terms of what is an achievable score, seems to flatten out somewhere in the 190s for, for teams that have to chase. If you bat first, you see quite a lot of scores over 200. Um, like, um, it's not like 25% of the time or something like that, but you do see a lot of teams score 200 batting first. You, you do, and, 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 and you quite rarely um, actually, actually see that chase down. And if you look at the history of the top scores in the IPL, it's a bunch of really high scores and then... You know, quite a long way down the list is the Tuatia game at Sharjah, where they got 222. Um, it's it's you would think that if a team batting first can get 210, a team batting second have a, a pretty yeah. good shot at that. But it doesn't All seem to be the case. It doesn't seem to be the case. No. Um, I, I th- there's a bit of bias in that, obviously, because math dictates that if you're batting second and the target is 190, uh, you could chase that down in 15 overs and been on course to get 250 but you never will be able to achieve that so there's, there's there is some, some bias in there that you have to acknowledge um, but there's definitely a lot of psychology as well and um, actually there's a book that I, I can't remember what it's called the one by the guy who did crick viz um where they talk about the psychology of, of chasing in, in knockout matches versus knock, not knockout matches in in odi cricket uh, the team chasing has a, is is a favorite to win just based on a coin toss two even teams Whoever wins a coin toss, if they get to chase, they are the favourite to win that match. Unless it is a knockout match, in which case the team batting first has the advantage. So there is something psychological in there. I mean, Matt, you are you're a psychologist. Do you, do you know anything about this 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 phenomenon? By 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 undergrad. Uh, no, I, I I thought about going into sports psychology actually as a as like a, a master's thing, but uh, doing a master's costs loads of fucking money, so I didn't uh, didn't do it. Um, but I mean, for me. Uh, I think it's just the the fact that I mean, there's there's kind of people like sort of uh, milestones and round numbers and things like that, don't you? So when you think about a chase of like two hundred, that's ten and over, and the the psychological difference between chasing like nine and chasing ten feels bigger than the actual difference. Um, so I think there's there's sort of a weird like human uh, nature to that, but also it's just that I think now how many times do you see when a team is chasing two hundred or so? And they get off to a really good start and they're well up with the rate. Uh, and then it just starts to peter out because you get that sort of, you don't get a head start. Whereas normally that's like, you feel like, oh, I've got a good head start here. And you feel like you're in a comfortable place. Like you would if you were setting the target because you don't have a target to aim for. Yeah, no one ever really talks about, about a good foundation for a chase, do they? It's, it's more about like trying to get a thing that's out of reach. Yeah. But when it comes to that chase, like a good foundation of being up with the rate is good, but you don't feel like you've made any progress towards it because you've got to do the same thing for the rest of the innings. Like you feel like you started fast and you're like, I'm going to carry on doing this. 
I don't know if I can do it. I don't know where the doubts start to creep in. I mean, this is all conjecture, but this is sort of how I, this what I, what I think from, from, you know, from watching cricket and, and seeing how things go. And I guess from playing cricket as, as well, you know, you, we, we, we don't have to chase 200 or 20 overs very often, but um, we still have to chase things when we play in amateur cricket. And, and that sort of, there's, there's that kind of a futility to it, I suppose, of feeling like the, the target's out of reach. Whereas when you're setting a chase, you don't have that target. Like you, you're just like, oh, I've, I've done well so far. Pressure's a bit off to try and get as many as we can and then and, and you get there. And uh, maybe, you know, maybe that's a bit to do with it as well. I think um, possibly as well, when you're, from a psychology point of view, when you're batting first, you have a get as many as we can get attitude mm. to how many runs you want to score. Whereas if you're batting second, you only want to get one more than the number that you have to get. Now, we're going to get a little bit mathematical here, but there's people who have modelled what the best approach is over like the last 30 balls of, of an innings if you have, say, five wickets in hand. Um, and effectively, the the best thing you can do is try and hit every single ball for four or, or six. Now, how did you, you get to that, that conclusion? Basically, you look at all the, the ball-by-ball ball data in the history of T20 cricket, and you look for situations where a player has played a shot that, that would, you'd have a reasonable expectation will go for, or that, that it's reasonable to assume that they were trying to hit a four or a six. So we're thinking here the slog sweep, basically anything hit in the air, reverse sweep, um, like it's, 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 you know, there's, a, there's a, the scoop. There's a category of shots that you'd only ever play if you were trying to hit a, a four or a six. And by looking at that, you can build a model that shows how likely it is that, that that shot will go for four or six, how likely that shot will generate a single, a two, a three, a four, well, well, you know, that is a four or a six, or a wicket. So for a, a regular delivery where, where a batter plays a shot that you would not assume they were trying to hit four or six, the chance of dismissal is like 3%. For a ball where, they, where they're playing a shot that you would expect they are trying to hit four or six, it's about 11%. Um, over 30 balls, you've got five wickets in hand. The, the, even with an 11% chance of losing a wicket every ball, your best tactic is to just keep swinging and swinging and swinging. If you're batting first, that is logically seems like a better thing to do because you're trying to get an infinite score. If you're batting second, you might be like, oh, I only need to hit the bad ball for four or six and I'll just defend or try and hit a single off the, the good ball, which is actually mm. a suboptimal way of, of doing it. Um, when you're chasing 160, it doesn't matter so much. You, you, like, you very rarely end up in a situation when you're chasing 160 where you're trying to get the maximum amount of runs you can off the last 30 balls of the innings. Unless something's gone horribly wrong, you probably, you probably want less than 50. Uh, when you're up near 200, you need to be playing that optimally. And, um, and that doesn't always happen, is, is what I'd say. So that's a, you know, a pretty significant diversion. Uh, yesterday was quite a good game of cricket between Mumbai Indians and um... Sunrisers. Sunrisers, that was it. Yeah, the team that I always try and forget and almost <laughs> succeeded, <laughs> almost succeeded in forgetting. Uh, yeah. Uh, do you want to um, really quickly summarise it and then we'll talk about it? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, wow, what a game it was. Uh, Mumbai went with an interesting lineup. I think it's fair to say uh, we saw a few a few new faces. We got. Um, uh, who do we get? We got Mayank Markande, we got Ramandeep Singh, we got Sanjay Yadav, another Yadav into the fray. And we also got to see uh, the uh, another one of the young whippersnappers for, uh, for Mumbai, Kristen Stubbs, albeit very briefly. Uh, Sunrisers made the most of Mumbai's inexperienced and uh, rather lackluster bowling attack uh, and also made the most of batting Kane Williamson for as uh, little as possible. Raul Trapatti... Nicholas Brown and Priam Garg, the main guys, getting them to a score of 193 for six of their 20 overs. Uh, uncharacteristically good for them. Um, but Mumbai, in response, looked pretty pretty solid themselves. The uh, the two openers actually fired for once and got them to 90-odd off uh, the halfway stage, and they were looking well up for it. But Umra Malik came back, took three quick wickets, leaving Mumbai somewhat in the mire. Um, but enter the man, uh, the myth, the legend, who was unceremoniously dropped after a few games for no discernible reason, Tim David, who absolutely plundered Natarajan in an over of fierce six hitting, including one that went for 114 metres. Uh, I would argue it was more than that, much like the Liam Livingston one that went for 117. I don't know how you tell the difference between those. Tim David's uh, gut feel 
uh, must have been longer. I, I've not heard a ball come off a cricket bat like that. It was insane. Ever, I don't think. It was an unbelievable shot. And he didn't and hit point, it square. He just... No, <laughs> held it down backwards. the ground. Yeah. Insane. Um, and yeah, at that point, it was, what, 19 or 13 they needed, and you're thinking uh, pretty much home and dry. Uh, unfortunately, Tim David then ran himself out weirdly with uh, a strange bit of running. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> uh, even then, with, uh, with, uh, with a few wickets left, you'd have thought Mumbai would have been able to make it home. But Bhuvaneshwa Kumar stepped up for a, a very timely 19th over wicket maiden, leaving, um, leaving a bit too much to do for Mumbai at the end, despite Ramandeep saying hitting some lusty blows for the last couple of balls. Uh, it was already out of reach, so three runs the margin of victory and Sunrise is uh, technically still in the, in, the, uh, in the competition, but uh, not really. Yeah, I haven't really got too many talking points from this. I mean, I, I, I'd like to acknowledge that it was a really good game of cricket. I'd like to acknowledge that um, Tim David, I'm going to call him Peter David then, all, all disciples and everyone. Um, <laughs> but I'd like to acknowledge that he was really good. And I think it's a bit unlucky. I, I, you were saying that maybe he thought, because it took like a deflection off the bowler and then rolled behind the stumps. Maybe he didn't really know where the ball had gone, and that he thought mm. it wasn't right next to the stumps. Yeah. Um, so maybe he was a bit unlucky there, or maybe he panicked. Could have panicked as well. Um, yeah. Well, it was obvious that he was trying to get on strike. For yeah. The the next over, but you were you were saying earlier, he probably didn't need to do that. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'd like to acknowledge that it's probably a good thing for Sunrisers that Cade Williamson has gone home. They might actually win their last match. <laughs> Um, gone back, birth his first child or a child. I assume it's his. What <laughs> uh, one would expect, so. Yeah. Um, it's or maybe it's like the first child born in New Zealand. I don't know what's going on there. Or Kiwi. Um, if, you, if if you're a Kiwi, let's know. Let's, Has there ever been a baby know. born? Yeah. <laughs> How many babies are born in New Zealand? Is it a big event? Does everyone come home? Um, you know what I mean. No, he's off, isn't he? Um, sunrise was sunrise was strange season. Strange season. It's quite a strange game. Strange team. Yeah. What Being was overall. it? Five wins on the bounce, then five defeats on the bounce, and uh, just just not really sure where to. Um, yeah, where where to pigeonhole? I think on on the one hand, I think they're a little bit unlucky that they have managed to completely be out of well or more or less be out of playoff contention at this point because they they won matches like that one against rcb that should mean they have an amazing net run rate at this point and they they came up with a little bit of a method for five matches didn't they where it was like marco jansen and and booby kumar doing the mm. power play causing some problems you know uh, suchith or sundar being tight in 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 the middle overs Whilst at the other end, you had Umran Malik bowling five on the bounce and just terrorising batters. And then Natarajan at the end... Natarajan firing any Yorkers. Uh, yeah, and then at the end, you got Natarajan with, with, with some Yorkers and you sort of have to find one more over out of Marco Jansen. And then Natarajan goes down. Shock horror. Um, it, it, the, the man who's always injured gets injured. And, it, and then it's really obvious they don't have a plan B. And, and Marco Jansen gets hit around because of one bad game. And they're like, oh, well, now we'll just play anyone. Um, and I, 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 feel like, I feel like probably I, I would say going into the season, I underestimated the, the, how good the player group was. I think that's, that, that's a better player group than, than I thought. Um, mm. Look at, look at how, well, the season. Peran, Peran actually performing. Peran's helps. been good. I, I think we were judging him on last year, yeah. which is possibly unfair. Rahul Tripathi has been one of the best players in the tournament. Like he's, yes. he's, we were talking about this earlier, one of three Indian players who strike at 140 against pace and spin. Him, Samson, and, ah, oh, flip, I've forgotten the other one again. Pretty uh, sure. Pretty sure. That's it, yeah. Um, Abhishek Sharma, you know, had a real emergence at the top of the order. Um, so they've got a little bit of batting there. It's not, it's not amazing, is it? But it, it, it's, a, it's a little bit of batting. It's better Bowl than we gave it credit for. Yeah, definitely. the bowling, the bowling has overall been pretty good. Good. Yeah. yeah, but some stupid decisions have really, really buggered them. The way they've used Umran Malik, heinously bad. <laughs> in this game as well, I mean, I'm just looking, just looking back at the scoreboard. I don't remember this happening. They only bowled him three overs. They didn't even bowl him out. 
They have Abhishek Sharma one out. And so, oh, who do we bowl? A guy who bowls missiles, taken three <laughs> wickets. Did he get injured or something? And I missed it. Like, I, this sort of thing. And the, the, the rotation of the, the overseas quick. That's just pretty strange. I, I suspect Natarajan isn't quite fit and they've just tried to get him back in at ASAP. Um, so strange. Um, really strange season for, for Mumbai as well. But they produced a fun game. So it is. Um, well done. Should we do the next game? Yep, that's the one that matters. The one that matters. Delhi v Punjab. What happened in Delhi v Punjab? Uh, well, I mean, this was, uh, this was another, another weird one, I think. Uh, Delhi Capitals batted first. And after a blistering start from uh, Safra Khan... Uh, and uh, sort of pinned at the other end by Mitch Marsh. Obviously, uh, I, I neglected to mention thus far that David Warner was out first ball to Liam Livingston, which would have been a, a real fillip for the, the, the Punjab side. But um, yeah, cracking start from Delhi Capital. Looked like they were going to run away with a ridiculously uh, unchaseable total, but uh, the spin boys brought it back. Liam Livingston took three wickets for 27 of his four. Um, which was uh, a pretty impressive feat from him. First time I think he's bowled all four, or certainly one of the few times. And he um, he had a great uh, great game. Certainly uh, did Rishabh Pant for, uh, for for that stumping, which was uh, a nice little bit of to and fro between them. And uh, also uh, Harpreet Brown and Ral Chahar uh, kept things fairly tight in the middle as well. And that meant that Delhi. Um, only managed to score 159 of their 20 overs, which looked like it, it was going to be um, a pretty chaseable target, especially after Punjab got off to a fast start themselves. It was uh, Johnny Bairstow, um, again, uh, proving to be pretty pacey at the top of the order. But that was about all she wrote for uh, Punjab Kings. As, uh, as soon as Kuldeep Yadav came into the attack, Things fell apart rather quickly. Uh, the spin did for them. Shal Taco came in and got a couple of important wickets, including that of Jitesh Sharma, the one man who looked like he might be able to drag uh, Punjab over the lines. But uh, as it was, they finished 17 runs short. And we'll be wondering what could have been because there was, there was a game there that was there for the taking for them. And, uh, well, they blew it with the bat. Oh, they did, and this is really story of the season for, for Punjab Kings it's, it's almost all of their players have just had an aberration at some point <laughs> and, and, and done something extremely costly today it was the turn of well you know everyone that wasn't called Johnny Bearstone was holding a bat like it <laughs> uh, and actually Jitter Sharma as well he, he played well or you know, say Monday um, Rabada had a meltdown in, in a game Odin Smith had a few meltdowns. Agarwal just hasn't shown up at all. Shikhar Darwan's had a couple of innings where he just went nowhere, put everyone else under pressure. It's, yeah. it's always seems like you get the big moments. You get them so they get themselves into these positions of maximum strength, and then they just don't Implode. do the basics. Uh, to the 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 Bearsto, the Bearsto knock. Um, I, I saw some people sort of saying, but well, he was in. He should have, you know, won the match for them. Which is one school of thought. I mean, the other school of thought is that, that Johnny that Bairstow... That was there to hit the six, so he should have tried that. to hit the six. It's not just that, but Johnny Bairstow, he gets 28 from, from 15 balls. That means the rest of your team have to get, what, 132 from 105 balls with nine wickets? I don't care. Mm. I don't care. Like, and definitely the pitch was difficult. Definitely the pitch was difficult. Um, and it wasn't, it wasn't a road. But... You, you, you've got to be able to do that. You've got to be able to do that in your sleep. That's a, that you should you should win that game ninety percent of the time. Are they just that? That's the story of their season. It's poor execution and some quite bad tactical errors as well. In a, in yeah. a couple of well, matches. Yeah, it was it was bonkers thinking. I think um, uh, you know going back to the, the super chat earlier, Liam Livingston uh, bowled well, and um, I thoroughly enjoyed his little. Um, uh, one-on-one with Rishabh Pant where he got hit for six and then the next ball he uh, walked up to bowl it and then didn't bowl it and then uh, the, the ball after well then the actual next ball uh, was stumped um, he didn't take a leaf out of that book or rather did take a leaf out of that book when he shouldn't have done didn't learn the lesson I also and, loved uh, did the same thing to Cordy Yadav I loved the Pant stumping the like 
are you going to humiliate oh, he just held yourself? It in his gloves yeah, for he was ages. like, are you going to try and get back so I can humiliate <laughs> you? And Livingston was just like, fuck it, I'm walking he just, off. He just, yeah, like... <laughs> he just carried on going. Yeah, um, I mean, he's had a great season, Livingston. I think there's no, there's absolutely no doubt that he has been their best player by an absolute country mile. Scored loads of runs really quickly. Mm. Um, in, in the last couple well, of... Well, I think Arsh, Arshdeep Singh, perhaps. Oh, uh, uh, actually, yeah, I always, I always forget bat. about him. I actually, I, yeah. I was saying on the Gorilla Cricket earlier that I think Arshdeep Singh's been the best bowler of the tournament. And I'd, I'd, I'd try and defend that if someone wanted to, to challenge me. I know Chahal's been good, but I think Arshdeep, what he's delivered in terms of run prevention has been insane. Um, mm. While his house burnt down around him as well. Like, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, But Livingston, yeah, yeah, Livingston has been so good uh, and it's good to see his bowling sharp as well but you can't it's, it's I, I don't really know whether that was the time and the place to play well, that didn't he do it again you do, you, you do you do know jack you know for sure that it wasn't didn't the he time do it to rashid actually. khan like i think he with had, with yeah, four he's overs certainly done it four overs someone. Four overs, not, I don't know if it was running down the wicket. I think he's been stumped a couple of times. I'm not necessarily against that. Um, but the, the sort of time and the place... Oh, well, actually, I mean, the way I'd, I'd say it, like on a, on a, on a, on a Bunsen, or a bit, uh, as close to a Bunsen as a, a T20 pitch is ever going to get, um, where, where the, the bowler you're playing against can spin the ball, the ball both ways, Maybe don't run so far out of your crease. If the ball spins past your bat, you're going to be outstumped. Maybe just put that one in the locker, and at least uh, at least for a few balls. Yeah, maybe you know you're only chasing 160, and seamers were getting hit in that match. It wasn't it wasn't it wasn't like you couldn't score any runs. Um, maybe you just say we're going to try and try and get 20 off off cold deep, and and you know Bearstow's given us the the buffer. To, yeah, to be given, a bit casual. He's given them the leeway to do that. Instead, I mean, yeah, like he, I, I feel like it's a bit harsh digging out Livingston, to be honest, when, uh, when, when with some of the I other... Mean, dis- they, yeah. With some of the they other dismissals. Um, I mean, my angst shot my to Axar Patel was... That is he was trying to, like, that was What that was like was, if you've ever played Brian Lower cricket or uh, the Ashes cricket or any of those like cricket games on PlayStation, where you've basically just played a cut shot to a ball that you can see is pitching on middle stump and... Uh, uh, and the obvious uh, has ensued, and he's been bold. It was he's honestly a, looked like he was batting with his eyes closed. He's a test match opener for the Indian national team, and he has been absolutely done there. Absolutely well bowled, Akshay Patel. But you can't be doing that. <laughs> you just can't be doing that if you're if you're the team captain, the number five, second ball. I mean, like, what are you? What are you doing? Actually, does he has? Actually, basically got one trick, and you've completely <laughs> fallen for it. It's good enough for England. Um, but yeah, it is. Um, and then Rahul Chahar and Jitta Sharma smack it around a bit and make it look kind of respectable. Um, Shardul Tucker yeah. as well. The Lord picks up some wickets. Mm. Yeah, uh, there was quite a funny moment true. where Graham Smith was like, "Oh, it's been a terrible season for Shardul Tucker," and then he took two wickets in three balls. Um, and then I think Smith brought it up again later. He was like, "Oh, well, you're in the innings." I said some stuff about Shardul Takur, and uh, he did it again. He got two wickets in like three balls. <laughs> so that was um, that was pretty funny. Delhi Capitals. Last word on the IPL segment. Um, really in the the catbird seat, as they were say, mm. uh, or as they do say. Um, are, are they going? Are they going to the playoffs? Uh, well, it's in their hands, and they're and they're playing Mumbai, aren't they, on the last game? So you've got to back them, surely. Surely it's all, it's, it, well, it is theirs to lose. We know it's theirs to lose, but I, I, I'm backing them. Uh, I, can't, I can't see them slipping up at this stage, especially with the net run rate difference. Okay. Um, yeah, I'd probably be happy to, to go with that too. I think they've been, they've been good. I mean, like, we'll, we'll talk about them more in the future, I think is what we're yeah. saying. But, um, and they, they've overcome a lot as well, haven't they? You know, pretty sure being ill... It's not ideal, uh, uh, to, to say the least. Uh, Nokia being uh, not himself injured for a bit. Um, so they, that's two very key players that they've had to do without, and they've managed uh, brilliantly. Having called it Yadav, uh, basically a new man, certainly been, uh, been a bonus. Um, somebody wants us to predict our top four in, in order. So sorry, I'll have to get the, the table up quickly because I um, closed it really for 
reasons. No, no need As to in like, the, I know who's the in the top thing. four, but who's going to finish in the top four? In, and in what order? Uh, I reckon it'll be... So Gujarat are going to... They've, they've won the group. Yeah, they've they, won. They actually cannot not win the group at this point, even if it went wrong. Um, who, uh, well, who are Rajasthan playing? That's the question, isn't it? In, uh, their, uh, in their final game. So the Royales, uh, they're playing the Chennai Super Kings. Right. Pro- probably, so the, I'm, probably the CSK backup squad, to be honest. Yeah, I'm back in, I'm back in Royals for second then. Royals second, yeah. LSG third, and, uh, and Delhi fourth, is that? Uh, yeah, 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 that, 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 that is four teams. Um, Luck now, they were pretty close to that, although it looked like at one point they were going to get a huge net run rate boost, so a, a slightly annoying for them that KKR came back, but good overall probably that, they, that they'd they probably just take the win when it looked like it was, it was going to go <laughs> bad. Um, there is a massive advantage, isn't there, to being in the top two, isn't it? Like uh, you're, you're three times more likely to win the IPL if you finish in the top two than if you finish it's... in the... I think it, I think yeah I think the stat is if like if you assume all things equal and every every team is 50-50 likely to win by being in the top 2 which is yeah, it's huge yeah uh, and then add to that that in theory you're one of the better teams as well it's uh, yeah it's it's Even an advantage better. that's what we're saying it's an advantage mm. um right max we've got about 10 minutes left of this show we should probably talk about england they released a squad today before we do just a quick reminder if you're watching on youtube or you're listening Hit subscribe, hit like. Let's get the likes rolling in. Let's get the subscribes rolling in. Uh, head over to Patreon and um, Serious Cricket. Uh, if you check out the show notes, there's some tips on what you can get and how you get it and um, the code to use at Serious Cricket. Um, someone in the chat said, Joel, Joel, sorry, this is a very funny comment, Max. Uh, I like you guys, but you are both worse than Dan. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, you know, in fairness... Dan does work in the IPL. It's literally uh, his job. Like, so, so I, um, I, 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 I'd, you know, at least we're in the conversation. At least we're in the I'm conversation. Just a, I'm just a bloody civil servant. Yeah. Uh, pray, pray I don't lose my job. Thank right. You, so England, they've released a squad. The squad is Ben Stokes as the captain. I don't know if you heard about that news. Um, Jimmy <laughs> Anderson, back. Stuart Broad, back. Pear Stowe. He's not back, but he's hanging around. Uh, Harry Brook, a new name there. Zach Crawley, Ben Folks, Jack Leach, Alex Lees, Craig Overton, not Jamie Overton. You do sort of wonder whether they were like, oh, we'll put Overton down. But like the accidental uh, pick of Sam instead of Tom. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ollie Pope, Matthew Potts, and Joe Root. Um, Two new Mm -hmm. names. Let's talk about them really quickly. Uh, Harry Brook. He's in the team because he's averaging 150 in first-class cricket this year. Uh, he scored 750-odd runs. It's been a pretty good start to the season. Um, you have to bear in mind that all of the matches that Yorkshire have played have been draws, apart from one, which went to the very end of day four. So they're, they're, not, they're not necessarily hard runs, but there's a lot of them. And, and quantity has a quality all of its own, as a, as a great general once said. Uh, Matthew Potts, he's a guy who's taken loads of wickets. So, in summary, England have basically picked all of the people that were in the team, less the guys who have been injured, and picked two guys that have had a very good start to the county championship season. Max, thoughts? Um, I mean, when you put it like that, it doesn't sound like such a bad idea <laughs> compared to what we were saying earlier, which was that we don't really see um, much of a point in it. Um, Anderson and Broad being back is, you know good because they're our best bowlers uh, they will be being uh, required to take all of the wickets for this series though won't they uh craig overton for me is like the big why because he was pretty bad in um in the west indies he's had plenty of goes and he's not it just doesn't seem like he's been up to the level of uh of test cricket so there's huge question marks for me over over him being in there, but again, um, you know you have to look at what what are the other options with the ball. Um, Matthew Potts not seen a lot of, but like as you say, I think he's taken thirty five wickets so far. The county championship at an average of about eighteen, uh, which is pretty impressive. Um, Ollie Stone's injured. Matthew Fish is injured. Chris Wokes is injured. Ollie Robinson was injured, but did play apparently. You said in the in his last two games, so um, 
him not being there is a bit of a surprise because yeah, even like an 80% fit Ollie Robinson is someone I'd rather have on the side than Greg Overton. Uh, so yeah, bowling's a bit of an interesting one. Harry Brook. I mean, you can't, it's very difficult to say to someone, uh, Oh, you've scored 750 runs in five games. Sorry. Tough luck, mate. You're not playing in this England team that can't bat. So, uh, I can understand his inclusion, but there are, again, some noticeable names who've also been good for a more sustained period who have missed out. Yeah. So the big one that everyone will know is Matt Parkinson, who is the English leg spinner. Uh, he's actually been taking quite a lot of wickets as well um, at a very low average and has been doing that for a very long time. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if anyone's been here has been following the England team closely recently, but it isn't like um, he's competing against Mura Litherin for the, for, for the <laughs> England spinner's job. It's yeah. not even like he's competing, to be honest, against a guy like Mo and Ali, like a guy who, yeah. who he might be a better bowler than, but Mo and Ali's bat plus ball value is is way higher he's competing against another guy who can't really bat and um goes through quite sustained spells in matches and series where he looks like he will never take a wicket uh, and in fact pretty much has never taken a wicket in the first innings of a test match um, hmm. i think wasn't uh, wasn't one of the wickets against the west indies the, the first time he has done that i don't know maybe the first time maybe it's the first time he took more than one or or something like that yeah it, but it's his average just goes down and down and down the, the longer you get through a, a test, which it's not necessarily the worst problem to have, but it's the right direction. <laughs> it's not. It's not necessarily the best problem to have either, because it means he is sort of yeah. unusable for for fifty percent or more of a, of a match. And I think from Parkinson, you probably get more than that. If you ever see Parkinson bowl, it's you, all of the games are streamed on on YouTube. If you're into into this sort of thing. Um, the, the striking thing about Parkinson is not not just how much he spins it, and and for a leg spinner, the the, the two in the world that I think rip it properly rip it at the moment, Chahal and Parkinson, like they really both spin the ball a lot. Uh, Parkinson probably a little bit slower, a little bit more old school, I suppose. It sort of goes up and down a bit more. Chahal's maybe got a bit more pace through the air. Both both put a lot of side spin on it, uh, but Parkinson doesn't really bowl too many bad balls. Um, I I was speaking with um, well, we were speaking with people today, and uh, and they they been talking to George De Bell about his trip to the West Indies, and they were saying by the third test, they weren't even really using him as a net bowler, and maybe that suggests that England know something that we don't. Um, I, I'd probably venture actually, you're reading a bit too much into that. It's like it, by the third test, well, he's not going to play in the fourth test because there was no fourth test. So like, what's the point in practicing bowling in the West Indies? Is maybe where that was coming from. Um, I I think that is a it's a bit of a sad omission. The other one that maybe should be in the team, Josh Bohannon. Yeah. Um, on paper, probably a better batter than Harry Brook over a sustained period of time. Uh, this season, he's been a bit unlucky that he's playing in a really good team. So he's only batted once in each of the five matches they've played so far. Uh, whereas. Brook has obviously got a few more goes, and so Bohannon's got he's got he's got he's got a double century. That's pretty good. That's one of the things you want. But that's his only score of note. I think his next best score is in the forties. Um, so on on weight of runs, um, it's a bit tricky there. What I'd say with this team overall is that I I don't think it's really one thing or the other. I mm. I I don't think I look at that team and I'm excited because I think they're playing the best team and they might be able to put up a fight against New Zealand. I think Craig Overton, definitely not the best player in that role. I mean, probably they'd be better off going to Toby Roland Jones or something like that for a one-off match. Um, there's also you know, a slightly unfit Robinson would probably be better. He actually has, Ollie Robinson was England's best bowler for 12 months and then they were like, oh, he likes a biscuit and now, <laughs> and now they won't pick him. Now they won't pick him. Uh, Chris Wokes, coming back from an injury, apparently fit to play. That's what um, Will McPherson of the the standard was saying. Fit to play, they've decided not to pick him. He was so bad in the West Indies. Though. We've got we've got two better options there, and then his brother Jamie Overton has been bowling over ninety miles an hour. Sorry, they've been speed gunning him. Basically, the same batter. Um, it was and, like, he's been, a, and not only has he been bowling that quickly, he's been taking wickets. Yeah. He's been electric for so. So there's there's three players there. Maybe none of them are uh, well. In Robinson's case, probably a bit more of a long term solution, but the. 
all of them, I think, more deserving of that of that place in the team. Then you look at the top of the order, and it's it's the the, the plan appears to be to bat Ollie Pope at three. So Harry Brook, who we were talking about, I don't think is going to play because Bearstow, Stokes, Bearstow's in. Root Stokes are going to be four, yeah. five, six. Folks is going to be batting seven. So what is Brook going to bat three? I mean, it wouldn't be beyond England to pick a guy playing no. wild, wildly out of position and then, and then get rid of well, him after one They're doing match. it. They're, they're, they're doing that. Whether they put Brook or Ollie Pope, they're well, doing this is, that. How this many, is why the how Bannon... many games has Ollie Pope batted at three in first class cricket? Well, this is why a big fat zero. This is why the Bohannon se- selection actually makes sense because the guy does yeah. bat at he three. He bats at three. Yeah, I know. Like, um, so you can you can you can put him there. And then uh, above that, Alex Leeson, Crawley. Crawley hit that century in mm. the West Indies and he had a nice 70 against Australia and then just does nothing when he doesn't play well. Just contributes nothing. Uh, good in the slips though, so maybe he's good good at banter as well. And <laughs> We'll have him in. And Alex Lees, um, I'm sorry to say it, a guy who averages 20 and I think probably is lucky to be averaging 20. Yeah. I, I don't really understand. I'd rather have Dom Sibley back. Well, I mean, and this is the, you know, this comes back round in, in a circle to the, the sort of point. Like, either play your best team, which is probably really as Dom Sibley or, or Rory Burns, as at least one of the openers, um, or play a team, you know, for the future. And then Tom Haynes is probably your, 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 your best current bet for people under 25 that we've not seen yet. Um, and you get that the whole way, sort of the whole way through the team. And in fact, Max, mm. I'd, I'd go as far as saying, but we could be in a situation this time next year where only sort of three of these players are, are going to be in a starting eleven for England in, in the first test of the 2023 season. And Stokes, obviously. Root, obviously. Um, and um, I think probably Bearstow. Bear yeah, probably yeah. Bearstow's the next best. Um, Anderson and Anderson and Broad, good enough, but old. So this could be the, this could be the swan song, I think. Um, Leach... I, I don't know how long he can hang on for. Uh, he might not even play, to be honest. Um, and then two openers, a number three that we're really questioning, and, and Ben Folks, who, who looks good behind the stumps, but really needs to do something with the bat. So quite uninspiring. And um, I, 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 yeah, I, I feel like you need a bit more strategy behind what they're doing. Yeah, no, I, 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 you know, it would be good to have a podcast where we can have considered debate and and uh, and, and I could play devil's advocate, but I, there's nothing I can um, conceivably say uh, against that. I, I think um, it's, I think it might just be a sign of the period that English cricket's in at the moment, though. You know, uh, we, we've named a few, we've we've named a few names of people who could come in, but you know, none of them we're saying are like, uh, you know. Uh, nailed on for either being in the side or definitely going to be successful. I think uh, it's just it's a rebuilding process, and um, we kind of know that. But it will be interesting to see whether the guys they've given a chance will will be able to um, to make their mark and and stamp their name down. And maybe next year we'll see an almost exactly the same team, and it'll all go perfectly. But it seems unlikely to me. Yeah, um, I agree. Um, we will, uh, as we build up to the the New Zealand series, we will obviously reorient the the general thrust of the show towards Test cricket. Um, but that's probably enough for today, isn't it? I, I, I'm away, so I'm guessing you and Ross will do a preview show of it at some point while I'm away. Uh, yeah, when are you back from your lovely trip? Fifth or sixth? So maybe. Oh right, it's I a don't long know. One. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, I'm well, no, I'm here till. S- Till next week, so I'll be doing oh, a few right. more IPL shows, but then I've got a little break to recharge my batteries before I come out fighting <laughs> for the second half. Right. Uh, are, yeah. we, are we wrapping this up? I think so. Cool. Pleasure as always, Max. Uh, final reminder: like and subscribe if you're over on YouTube. Just subscribe or review or whatever you know on on Spotify, yeah. etc. And uh, keep hanging out with us. We're we're cool guys. Goodbye. <laughs>